My father, John Wayne, lived a life of adventure built on strong friendships and hard work. He enjoyed his work as much as his play. Whether filming, fishing, hunting, exploring, or heading up to Alaska on his World War II minesweep for the wild goose. At the end of a long day, he enjoyed nothing better than a good drink with friends. Oh yeah, welcome to the vlog everybody. We started trying to capture stories from people that were around my father while he was alive, because everybody's getting older. And then we've had requests to kind of keep it going as they've gotten to know different family members and seen some of the stuff that we do. So I thought, what the heck, we'll film some of it. So today we're taking a little tour of Newport Beach. Right after I was born, my father moved down here from uh, the valley up in Los Angeles. There you go. Right after I was born, my father bought a 136-foot World War II minesweeper called the Wild Goose. He put it down here in Newport Harbor to make some changes on it and at the same time decided to just move the whole family out of Los Angeles and down here. So a story that I heard later on, I'll show you where it is, but we're gonna, we'll go by his house and um, hit a big dock, you know, and plenty of room to keep his boat there. But when he put the boat there, he noticed that his boat blocked the neighbor's view, and so he went over and he rented a slip, a giant slip, uh, rather than block his neighbor's view. It sort of exemplifies the kind of person he was. Is that today? Yeah. And so what's the tide right now? High tide. Which we may not be able to get out tonight. Well, <laughs> we got a bigger bridge so we can get bigger boats in here, but this is one of the highest tides of the year, and I don't think we're gonna get under the bridge right now. I think we're gonna have to come back tomorrow. Yeah, we can um, try sneaking under the bridge, but I think five eighths is like as close as you can get. We'll turn Kiki into a first mate. So you see there's red buoys and green buoys? Yes. So you want to stay between those two. And like sometimes you're not sure where you should be, but you should always have the red buoy on the right when you're returning from the sea. So you say red right returning. So now we want them on the left because we're going out. But when we're returning from the sea, they should be on the right. Because if you go on that side of the buoys, it's very, very shallow. And we would run aground in there. We're not getting under. I found it! All right, Kiki, watching that white light? Yeah. Bad time to tell you that I'm bad luck, Ethan. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, we're not getting under. I don't know, maybe I'm good to 18. You on? Yes or no? We'll have to back out. Is it slanted or is it just me? No, no, it's, it's slanted. Right here. Well, anyway, the rest of the video is going to take place on the other side of this bridge. So stay tuned for low tide. We're going to take a tide break. While we're taking a tide break, check out this um, cool Ethan shirt. I'm digging this shirt a lot. And if you like it, you can get one for yourself at johnwayne.com. Do you want to drive the boat? crunching so the tide must be good let's see how it gets so low on this side it always feels like it's gonna hit to me Ooh, tight this is where the Reuben Ely used to park and we'd swim over from this neighborhood 
some over here, jump up the bridge, whatever. Get on that paddle wheel and jump off. This horseshoe island here is called Linda Island. When I was a kid, it was just a mud flat. And uh, when they were putting the survey stakes in it, back in the day, the kids would swim over from the neighborhood and move the survey stakes around. If you look, this neighborhood here is called Bay Shores, and it, it comes to a point, and the house right on the point was where my father's house was. It's no longer there. Uh, they've torn that house down and rebuilt something, but that's where it was. Kind of a beautiful spot. They first made this island. There were there's ads where they were selling lots for 1,200 bucks, and if you you know bought it on the weekend, they'd give you a second one for free. <laughs> and now I don't know what those things cost, but they're expensive. You know, time, time, and people, and the wild goose should be parked right up here. It takes people out on little cruises, dinner cruises, and things. And it looks very different from when my father had it. They've added a couple more decks to it, so it looks very boxy now. But the hull, you know, is the same, and it's still floating and operating. The hull is, uh, if anybody remembers Jacques Cousteau, his boat, the Calypso, it's the same hull. It was built, they were built side by side in the same uh, shipyard up in Ballard, Washington uh, during World War II and the wild goose actually went up and patrolled in the Aleutian Islands. Oh, I can see the transom of the wild goose right there. See the flag, the little wooden transom, it's white. Whoop, let's go over there and, and ask, we, we can get on there. Let's go check it out. Chase, how's it going? Good to see you. Nice to see you. Yeah, how are you doing? Well, she's still floating. Oh yeah, she's still here, looking good. Chase mm. is the captain of the Wild Goose, my dad's old boat. And a boat that I spent, you know, the first 17 years of my life on. Oh, it'll be fun to see it. I haven't <laughs> yeah, been come in down, a take a look. We were just uh, kind of showing people around Newport and some of the old places that me and my dad spent time as a kid. On the bay cruise, we went by the back of the boat today, and so thanks for accommodating the quick tour. Yeah, our pleasure. Oh my gosh. This was the engineer's cabin. He has a liquor room now. I wasn't allowed in there when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like completely different, but same, same basic bones, but a lot of remodeling. We didn't have a lot of the accessories or colors. Or... So it's, it's, there's differences, but it's, you know, it's, it's the place. Sunset, we'd fire off this cannon, you know, when the sun went down and then they'd sit back here and have drinks and these beautiful steaks that they'd grill up on top. And then I've never ate here. I always had to eat with the crew and the gal. Where we'd fight over the drumsticks. Me and the engineer Ken, who was Bert's brother. Yeah. Ken was the engineer on the boat from, you know, the entire time while I was on it. And uh, Ken got seasick as soon as we pulled out of the harbor, carried a trash can around in the engine room. When you see the engine room, like you won't believe that this guy lived and worked on this boat. You wanna go to the engine room? Yeah, let's go to this. Oh my gosh, this is this is it. These are the same stairs. Wow, the same motors. And so you can see the original framing of the boat there. Like upstairs now it's covered in paneling, but this is what, you know, it looked like on the outside. It was, it was nice. Like it was a handsome, masculine, comfortable yacht, but it still had sort of utilitarian roots. Like it wasn't, it was comfortable, but it wasn't fancy. Yeah. I guess you could say that. Oh, well, you could tell. Yeah, and you can still tell what it used to be. You can yeah. still tell that it was built for the Navy. Who knows how much asbestos is contained in this <laughs> material. So these Chains things, if you're up on the bridge, you'll move two of these levers that are on a pedestal, and then they will move this thing down here. And so the guy standing, he's like, okay, one-eighth reverse, 
he'll shift it and then he'll add the power. Do it manually. So if you're trying to dock, it's not like me where I can manipulate everything from my controls. You're up there sending a message to somebody who then does it and then waiting for a response. And we used to have these, have you ever seen those tubes where you, you pull the thing off and you talk into the tube and the tube would go up to the thing? You put your ear to it and you could talk to it. So they could communicate that way. Pretty cool. Yeah, imagine trying to dock this way. Oh my God. It's one thing though. But well, we had some that. good, <laughs> like good scrape sessions <laughs> trying to get this thing docked. Yeah, this is beautiful. It's an appropriate ringtone. Yeah. And this is where the crew would eat, and I ate with the crew, and then obviously the galley. And there was a chef, cook, whatever you want to call him, Billy Sweat, was a great cook and a, and a great guy but he did not want you messing around in the kitchen. And he could crack like a, a hand towel and leave a welt on you. <laughs> you come in, you try to grab something, crack! Billy, wow! Oh my gosh, this thing. This was like a soda machine. You know, so you could like pull for root beer or pull for Coke or whatever out of that little son of a gun. Hard table. Yeah, look at this. Wow. So they called this the hickey. There was one in here. It's a big, deep sort of lounge type thing. And then there was one up on the, the aft of the house on the top deck, which has been extended. But that's where they'd hang out most of the day. This is my bunk right there, EW 1965. Wow. And then this was my sister, Aisa. So I guess I had the top bunk. And then that window opened up to the hickey, the lounge that was out there. And then this goes, it has a little bathroom here and then it went, goes, curves back over to my dad's bathroom and then into his stateroom. Looks like it's the same. Forward to here is the captain's cabin and the pilot house. And Pete Stein was the captain for most of my childhood. And he was fairly salty. Him and my dad would argue over <laughs> They'd get along and they'd argue. And this chair, you'd sit in this chair on watch. Oh my gosh. So when you're cruising, this is where you'd be. It was, it didn't have a built in. Like it was all like freestanding units. It wasn't built in like it is today. And that brass ring on the helm was polished like to a shiny finish. And if you touch that, you got your <laughs> whooped. You put your hands anywhere but on the spokes. I still tell people <laughs> not to touch that brass. <laughs> I have a grab here. I even do it. If I'm driving it, I just do it from here. And you know, those two brothers from England, Bert and Ken, they worked on the boat for you know, 18 years maybe. Ken worked on it and then he, it was in Spain or somewhere in Europe and he got Bert a job on yeah. it. Yeah, Bert was like in the army or doing something in England. He said it was like a frozen day. He was driving a crane that slid out of control. And he got a call from his brother. The brother said, hey, I'm in Gibraltar with John Wayne on his yacht. Would you like to come work on it? And Bert said he just like ran. <laughs> He just ran to get to the to Gibraltar, and you know they stay on the boat. I mean, Bert lived in the same mobile home up here. Yeah. Until he went back to that home in England. So, uh, yeah. really great guys. He came down a lot. He would every so every yeah. May we would do some, some cruises, kind of cruise, celebrating yeah. his birthday. And if Bert was free, he'd come down and he'd ride along, and he'd tell the guests, you know, some fun facts and yeah. some 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 funny stories. I mean, we terrorized him as kids. You know, like, I woke up and went to Bert. And I was with Bert until I went to sleep. <laughs> he was a great guy. Great life. But I think back, like, now so many boats go down to Cabo San Lucas, they go over to La Paz, they go up into the Sea Cortez. There weren't a lot of them in the mid-60s doing that, you know? So if we're down in mainland Mexico, or in the Sea of Cortez, or up in British Columbia, you know, they just didn't have... There weren't a lot of boats that could make those trips. And, I, you know, I can remember being on this boat and being anchored, you know, whether it's in San Catin, or Zihuatanejo, or Correas, or Isla Mujeres, or any of these places. It was really remarkable 
remote back then. Cabo, there was just was just a village, like just a fishing village. And we'd trade you know, t-shirts for lobster or a Playboy for a bunch of lobster. I mean, well, man, thanks for this trip down memory lane. <laughs> This was really fun. It's my pleasure. It's I've been on it a couple of times, but never really enjoyed it until today. It's fun hearing the stories wow. that, that I sometimes wonder, like, is that true or is that just urban myth? Well, so it's it, fun to hear you, know. you confirm something.